So our special guest today is Chase Will. Welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. You're very welcome. So tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started writing horror. Oh, well, I kind of grew up watching horror movies. My parents were really cool about that. Let me watch pretty much whatever I wanted and read whatever I wanted, for better or worse. (laughs) (laughs) So I got really into Stephen King, R.L. Stein, of course, and the... um, the Cirque de Freak books by Darren Chan were big ones for me. And uh, through these authors, I found blogs about writing. And, you know, if you want to be a storyteller, do this mainly, you know, write. So I got my start probably in grade school, just writing for the paper, then high school, doing things like stand up comedy and writing for that, uh, writing for the paper, writing for a couple magazines. And it's always just been a passion of mine and horror especially has been my good uh, outlet. Yeah. Fantastic. So is that why you started writing horror? Because it is a good outlet? Uh, Yeah. Horror has kind of just always been where my imagination's at, especially what I read and uh, what I watch. So it's kind of always just being steeped in that. How do you come up with your ideas? Um, It's kind of a weird process. Like, I don't go off of dreams or anything like that, but sometimes I'm just in the middle of cooking or in the middle of washing dishes, and I think, huh, that'd be a good idea. You know, let's write that down and see if it goes anywhere. Uh, More often than not, it doesn't really go anywhere. It kind of just gets scribbled down and put it in my book of notes. But sometimes it actually forms a full outline, and I'm able to actually sit down and write and get an entire book done. And there have been books, too. There have been some books where I finish it and it kind of sits in my drawer forever because it's not ready. Because typically I do several drafts because I'm kind of a perfectionist. Yeah. Do you ever go back through the journal and have a look to see whether any of those ideas sort of like spring up a few months later or something like that? Oh, yeah, sometimes like some I mean, I leave notes all over my apartment. (laughs) So it's it's a cluttered mess here of just notes all over the place. And sometimes I'll just stumble upon one. I think, you know, that's a that was a pretty good idea. Let's see if it goes anywhere. Yeah, because sometimes they won't go there and go anywhere there. And then will they? Sometimes it takes a while before it actually turns into something. Yeah, it's kind of like a pregnancy of its own. You know, sometimes it just takes a bit longer. Sometimes it comes earlier, but eventually ideas turn into something if you work hard enough at them and you push them. Yeah. I mean, I, I, can, I can be kind of lazy sometimes with ideas where I think, you know, this is a good idea, but I'm not ready to tell it yet. And other times I feel like it's the right story at the right time. Do you ever feel that you go too far with these stories? Uh, there was one book I put under a pseudonym of Ash Crowlin. It was called Birthday Girl. It's probably my most uh, perverse and splatter heavy book. And uh, I put it under a pseudonym so that my parents wouldn't read it. But of course, my entire family knows about it. So they've all read it. <laughs> and they, they've they all kind of judged me a little bit, I think, because it kind of pushes the envelope really far. So yeah, sometimes I go a little far, I guess. But yeah. my recent works, it's been pretty tame. Yeah. Do you, do you think you'll ever go that far again with any other books? Oh, uh, well, I told people there'd be a part two through six of Birthday Girl. So I kind of committed to that. I'm not sure it's going to be exactly as heavy as it was in the first book, but I've got a pretty good uh, storyline for the next few books on that series. Yeah. Uh, they'll be uh, they'll definitely be violent and bloody, but maybe not as bloody as the first one. Yeah. So are you a plotter or a pantser? Um, most of the time I have a rough outline, you know, just like a page or less of what I want the story to be from beginning to end. I kind of treat it like, uh, if you're writing a script, you write something called a treatment, which is a page long. It's just the plot of the book from beginning to end, just very broad strokes. So Mm -hmm. I always start off there, but mostly, uh, mostly pantsing, I guess, because after that rough outline, I kind of just type it out and go by the seat of my pants. Yeah, a, a lot have said that the same thing. They do have sort of like um, a little bit of a plot and then they just go with it as the story's progressing. I mean, there have been some books I've written where I completely pants and it doesn't work out sometimes because I'll have an entire draft done and I think this is garbage, I have to start over again. So I've done one book where I did literally like 14 drafts because each time I felt like there was something missing. So I would start over and go back through it. Yeah. Like start completely over from scratch. 
And I think the final product was, uh, it was a lot better than the first product. Yeah. You did say that you were a perfectionist though, didn't you? Yeah. Like it takes me a long time to be happy with my work. I have an editor, uh, James Carlson, actually from Gloomhouse Press, who does my editing for me. And he does a really good job. So if I miss something, I don't have to worry about it because he's kind of my safety net. Yeah. But you do anyway. Yeah, I still fret over it. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just like us all. I think we're all, I think as authors, we are our worst critics. Yeah, what I hate is when I look back at a book that's already published and I, I spot a mistake and I think, oh my God, this is the end of my career. Someone's going to notice that. They're going to hate me. <laughs> it's... <laughs> It's an irrational fear because nobody really notices small errors, but I notice it, so it bothers me. Yeah. So what's the hardest thing about writing in the horror genre? Uh, the hardest thing is finding stuff that hasn't been done to death. I mean, pardon the pun, but <laughs> um, everything I feel like has been done to an extent, but you got to kind of find your originality and you got to find your voice. And that can be hard sometimes, especially when you're doing like, uh, murder mysteries or, you know, slashers or suspense books. I mean, you got to find something that's truly you and that can be difficult because you really got to like look inward and see how can I tell the story in a way nobody else has. Yeah. Right. But like you said, you've just got to try and put that uniqueness onto it. Yeah. And that can be difficult sometimes. I know that's why I struggled with it first because when I started writing in grade school, I would just straight up copy Stephen King. <laughs> I'd be like, okay, here's the plot. I'm just going to rewrite his entire story and make it sound like mine, which was plagiarism. I mean, that's what it was. <laughs> but I'd, I didn't like submit it anywhere or anything. That was just like me starting out and kind of getting, the, getting in the groove and kind of studying what writing is and how a story is told. So I guess that was kind of a good starting point. Because it kind of taught me a lot about plotting. It taught me a lot about characterization and just voice. Because Stephen King has a very particular voice. Yeah. And as I read more, I found more different voices and different ways to tell a story. So it was kind of my uh, it was kind of my boot camp as a kid, just copying down what others have written. <laughs> That's right. I mean, like you say, even though it is plagiarism, it does teach you how to write and how to get everything in one particular place um so yeah it, it's yeah. a good way of starting out and typing out an entire Stephen King book is hard yeah <laughs> <laughs> they're like 400 pages so <laughs> it was a commitment it's a good job it wasn't it then <laughs> oh yeah I don't know if I would ever finish <laughs> so how do you create a compelling character uh, you got to find truth and that's something that's kind of hard to do unless you're around people constantly because you got to kind of study people and people watch and see what are their idiosyncrasies, you know, what drives a person, what's relatable, especially and what's unique. And to create a good character, you have to have something that's challenging to them. You can't have like a Mary Sue type character that everything goes perfectly for that, you know, everything just kind of works out for. You have to have something in their way because if there's something in a character's way, you got to figure out, OK, how do they specifically handle this, which tells a lot about them as a person. Do you, uh, do you ever comment, um, sorry, do you ever base them on any fears or experiences that you've had yourself? Oh, yeah. Uh, there was one book. It was a bit darker. I haven't actually put it out into the world yet because I'm still working on it. But within the book, something terrible happens to a family member, which is, of course, a big fear of mine because I love my family and they mean the world to me. But in the book, something really terrible happens, which was me kind of exercising my fears on the page. So, yeah, sometimes it's personal fears that kind of bleed their way into a book. Yeah. Do you think that it helps a little bit? Uh, I think it's pretty therapeutic because at the end of the book, you have to have a resolution and a catharsis. And if you can get to that point and kind of face your fears on the page, and figure out, okay, how does all this end? You know, what is the light at the end of the tunnel? You know, how do these characters reach a climax? And that's cathartic in a way, and it helps me kind of fight my fears. Yeah. Do you ever feel sorry for what you put your readers through? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I like how the authors sort of like 
start laughing when they answer that question. <laughs> I mean, one of my books was particularly emotional and a lot of readers say it made them cry. And my first thought was I did a good job then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what you're aiming for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I mostly just want to get some reaction out of a reader because there's nothing worse than reading a book and having no reaction whatsoever to it because that makes a pretty boring story then. Yeah. So if, if I can make you feel fear, if I can make you cry, if I can make you throw the book across the room in rage then I've gotten a reaction out of you and I feel like I've done my job. That's right. So how do you feel the horror genre is going to evolve? I feel like it's evolving constantly. I mean, we're seeing a new uh, rise in splatterpunk authors, especially. And, you know, you got the splatterpunk awards coming up at the uh, killer con. I think it is. Then you got authors like Aaron Beauregard, Daniel Volpe and Christopher Triana kind of pushing the envelope constantly with their work. And I feel like the indie underground world is where it's at right now because so many new authors are able to get their books into the world on their own without waiting for an agent and without waiting for validation from a big house publisher. Yeah. So I think that's really helping, you know, the landscape of horror grow because people don't have to wait anymore. Like anybody, any average Joe can put their book online and have it available immediately. And yeah. It's a lot easier nowadays to get your stories into readers' hands if you work hard at it. That's right. So tell us a little bit about your books. Um, Starting off with Birthday Girl, that one was, like I said, especially bloody. And that's kind of where I started off with publishing because, you know, I was an immature college kid. And I was like, OK, what freaks me out? You know, what would entertain me in a really gory book? So you know, that came to be Birthday Girl. And that was, of course, under my pseudonym, Ash Crowlin. And then uh, my latest horror book is called Where Dreams Are Entombed. And that's about an aging rock musician who moves to Los Angeles to make his dreams come true. But he kind of meets some shady people who have plans of their own for him. And yeah, kind of ask yourself in the book, how desperate are you? You know, how desperate are you to find your dreams? How desperate are you to make money? You know, what would you do to make this work out? Yeah. Which is a challenging question for anybody because we all have dreams and we all want to make successful, uh, successful art. Fantastic. And um, do you have anything exciting coming up? That you I have a, uh, I have a short story collection coming out December 19th and that's called mandated smiles and other strange tales. That's uh 10 original short stories. Uh, most of them printed for the first time. And they kind of range from bloody to suspense to, uh, I want to say, uh, literary, <laughs> for lack of a better term. So it's a pretty wide range of stories. And I'm hoping people really dig into that one. Brilliant. Okay, that's fantastic. So what would what advice would you give to someone who wanted to break into the horror genre? Uh, challenge yourself constantly, you know, set goals that are realistic. Like, don't tell yourself, I'm going to write 4,000 words every single day because eventually you're going to stumble and you're not going to be able to do it. And that would make you a failure in your own mind. So set goals that are realistic, such as I'm going to sit down for 10 minutes a day and get something done. Or today I'm going to outline this part of the book, or today I'm going to spend at least half an hour in my head thinking about this book you know, kind of manifesting it. So being realistic and working hard is where it's at. Like, I think that is good advice for anybody at anything. Yeah. You know, always set goals for yourself, but keep in mind, if you don't hit that goal once, then you're going to be really disappointed in yourself. So make it something you can hit consistently and read yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's that's the problem is that people need to make realistic goals that they can actually achieve. Yeah, especially with horror, because people tend to think writing horror is easy and it's not. <laughs> it's yeah. very, very hard <laughs> sometimes because yeah. you got to kind of find ways to get a reaction out of people. And nowadays, readers, especially really uh, Internet savvy readers, they've been through the ringer already. They've already seen all the different avenues of being scared. So. You don't want to bore anybody, so you got to find new ways to create and new ways to be original and ways to express your voice. 
And I'm babbling now, but <laughs> that's uh, that's the harder part of writing for anybody is pushing it and getting something new out there, something that's going to take someone by the hand and take them on an adventure they haven't been on before. Mm, you're right, totally right. And you're fine with the babbling, so don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> It's been a pleasure having you on the show, Chase. And I wish yeah, thank you, you so much. With the thank you so much. releases and things. 